Well, good morning, everybody. Just received my 20X yesterday, and I was going through and trying to figure out how best to one, get everything hooked up, powered up, but also how to measure how much power is being used. So I've done a couple of different things. One, I've taken and connected my RV back over to the shed that is right in next to my driveway where I keep all of my tools. And I have a 100 amp feed into the shed. But what I've done is I've pulled just an extension cord out from my shed over to the RV. So let me show you that connection. Okay, so for the connection, I have a drop cord coming in from my shed. I wanted to measure the watts and the amps being used, so I'm doing two things. One, connected to the power cord. I have this amp watt test unit from Reliance Controls where I can look at and measure either the amps or the watts. So if we look at this and see, it's currently connected and showing it's about 280 watts being used. Uh, the only thing that I have running inside literally is the refrigerator and I've got one little USB powered light that I have charging. Now I can flip this from watts to amps and it shows me that I've got 2.4 amps. Now I'm not sure 100% how accurate this device is. So I'm also using my Southwire surge guard and you can see that it's rotating through, it tells me I have 120 volt using one amp. I have a display connected, right? And it gives me the details that everything's running well there. So I also purchased this, the guard and the monitor to go with it. And you can show that it's not even barely showing an amp and it's only showing 0.1 kilowatts. So there's a little bit of discrepancy between the surge guards and what's coming in on the Reliance controls. So what I'm gonna do is slowly turn a couple of pieces on, let you see the results, and we'll see what the difference is from there. Okay, so the next view is I went in and turned on the battery connect to on so that it's charging the battery. Now, I do have two solar panels on top and it looks like the refrigerator has decreased in the amount of power that it's pulling and I've got the battery up and charging the battery on that side. So about 180 watts, one amp. The connection here still shows less than an amp. And on the monitor, still shows less than an amp. So now let's go turn on the lights and see what we find there. Okay, so next step is I went in and I turned on all four of lights, the outside light, the two inside lights and the bathroom light. And you can see I'm up to 245 watts, about two amps. And again, I'm not sure if that could be the refrigerator cycling on and off, but refrigerator, the four lights, the battery is on trickle charging, coming back. And you can see that I have still only 0.1 kiloamps and on the surge unit itself 122 volts now up to one amp so i'll slowly turn things on and we'll see what the the power draw is on each of these different devices okay so next i just went in and turned on the water pump there's no water running so obviously no draw 252 watts two amps Same readings on the surge guard, showing just about one amp. Okay, next I turned on the fan, max power. So we're up to 300 watts, should be a little over two amps, 2.5. And the surge guard, just showing one amp on this side. Okay, next step. I'm going to have my wife turn on the water heater, excuse me, turn on the water, which should run the water pump. Then we're going to turn that off. We'll turn on low air conditioning and then go to high air conditioning. Okay, turn on the water please. So you can hear the pump running. All right, turn water off. And you can also hear the heat from the fan coming in. The 
air coming out. So it went from about 260 to 350 watts. Okay. All right, low air conditioning. So red. So low air conditioning, we went from 260 watts to 1200 amps. Currently drawing here, 10 amps. Sorry, a little bit of a reflection. 10 amps there. Let's check the two monitors here. The surge guard is showing eight amps and nine amps here. So eight on the remote display and showing nine amps on this display. And my circuit for the drop cord is a 20 amp circuit breaker. All right, let's go to high air conditioning. Okay, high air conditioning. Okay, so how air conditioner on high, both doors are open. It's using a little over 1300, right at 1400 watts. 11 to 12 amps here. 10 amps on the remote monitor. 10 amps here. So that gives you a good idea of, I'm currently running, battery connect is on to charge the batteries. The refrigerator is running and it's on the max cool. It has been cooling overnight, so it's not running constantly, so it's already cooled. Uh, the microwave is on. It's just drawing power for the display. All the lights are on. The air conditioner's on. And depending on the display, you're at 11 and a half on my amp watt guide or 10 amps based on the surge guard. So hope this is helpful for you. So my next test was to see what could I power using my Honda generator. So I have a Honda 3000 IS. Uh, I connected it back up. I've got a little uh, Camco adapter going from the generator to a 30 amp RV plug and then just going directly in using the smart plug coming back into the RV. So I currently have it running with the air conditioner on low, lights on, refrigerator on, battery charge or battery connect on. The microwave is running just showing display, not actually running to, to cook anything. One of the challenges I did run into is I'm not able to currently use the Chemco 30 amp adapter, RV adapter, with my surge protector. The surge protector gives an alarm or a note saying that it's an open ground. And with the open ground, the challenge I'm running into is that uh, the surge protector is searching for a grounding path and there's not one on the generator. So I did a little more research. There's actually a plug that you can buy or that you can use that goes into one of the 15 amp electrical plugs that are just to the left of the Chemco yellow plug here. Let me show you. It's gonna go here. And so I can put in that grounding plug and then that would solve the problem of the open ground and then connect back into the surge guard so that I would have the surge guard as extra protection back on the RV. But for now, it's just a straight generator adapter smart plug back in and I'm running everything from there.